Another day, another hike. A juicy 16.5er to Port Scatho along the beautiful Roseland Peninsula, which is part of the Heritage Coast and has some of the most spectacular walking in South Cornwall. Hoping for cheeky juvie, peregrine, and some seals, and lots of seabirds, and quite a lot of pain this morning. Getting really quite tired in the days now, just sort of mentally. Late night video editing, finally catching up with me. Got a little bit of a drizzle going on as well. So today is actually a super day. The water is like a mill pond, so any disturbance or any black shape will show up so well because we haven't got the glare of the sun. And with my luck with horba horba porpoises yesterday, I might be in luck. Flat as a pancake. Flat as my feet. Flat as my brain. Help. Cornwall is still so beautiful, even in mizzly, drizzly weather. Don't be put off by the overcast skies that I'm seeing. With rain and damp brings growth and more life. Every step now is like, ow, 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 ow. I was making good progress and then realised I'd walked right past the nature reserve that I'd wanted to visit. I've just done a 20 minute detour and I'm double backing on myself, so it better be good. So I've come to a place called Swanpool Nature Reserve and the lake you see here today used to actually be part of the sea. An event in the last ice age formed a sandbar which actually cut it off and it's now separated by a shingle bar which I'm going to in a minute. Swampool's brackish water, so brackish water means a mixture between salty and fresh water, is of national importance. Swanpool has over a hundred recorded bird species here. Mallard are year-round visitors and we've got coots, we've got griefs, we've got the cygnets. Um, we've got more hens here who are just coming up, look. Time for school, kids! This bird here is the coot. It's related to the moorhen and it's recognised by its uh, distinctive white crest on its head um, and totally black and it's got these really weird, really cool feet. So they're sort of flaps of skin as opposed to web which help them while swimming. You can see it's flaps of skin on its feet which look really odd, they almost look like feathers. I really like them, they're really cute aren't they? At its deepest point, Swampool is only two and a half metres, yet when it was formed it was three times larger and three times as deep as it is today. The beach that you see behind me here is part of the shingle bar that was formed during the ice age. Salty water here and then creating the brackish lake behind where the nature reserve is today. Gilly nilly gill gillin gnaf gilly nilly gilly lily gnavas. I'm an embarrassment to call them. Nope, not quite another boat trip. I had to take the ferry to join the coast path on the other side. And we were given a lovely little treat on the way. Back on track. I'm in a place called Place. Now if that's not confusing, I don't know what is. I'm gonna go to Place. Yeah, but what do I It was very muggy. It's so muggy. Currently standing on St. Anthony's head. Poor guy. 
um, important in the war because it has loads of gun emplacements and artillery batteries used to protect this, the enormous harbour that is Falmouth Harbour. Anthony's Head is the southernmost point of the Roseland Peninsula, so I'm just beginning my journey along it now. Now, the Roseland Peninsula is owned by the National Trust. They are in the process of clearing all this scrubland on to the left of me here um, to restore what they think is an old wildflower meadow. Those wildflower meadows can really improve connectivity for invertebrates and other heathland uh, and clifftop wildlife. There's two little stone chats having a good old chat. Rose and Peninsula, I like you already. I've been really encouraged over the last couple of days with what I'm doing. I've been getting messages from people all over the world, more so than I ever could have expected. In Moscow the other day, one from Australia, USA, Aberdeen, to me. It just reiterates why I was interested in exploring social media's potential in communicating science. It can reach an almost infinite number of people just by the press of a button. And I think science has so much to learn from it. We're only just scratching the surface in terms of what it can do. In today's visually hungry and impatient you know, online audience, I feel that science needs to now kind of meet today's audience's preferences. It's an exciting new era for science communication to truly harness the power of communicating online. I just saw the juvenile peregrine. I just saw the juvenile peregrine. You know it's a juvenile because A, it's smaller, and B, it's really flappy when it flies. It have a big black cloud chasing me. Quick, so quick. 